Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go for the awesome news because on the south the events are going with a high speed. So you can see that Ukraine captured the main strategic areas in Kherson region. I would say the most important one was Davidiv Breed because here we have the main cross the road and the fighting for this particular place wasn't going for nearly two months so today officially we took this part and we're gonna continue to use this road on counteroffensive to reach Burislav. so i guess russia would build the new defense line over here across this road just not to let ukrainian army to take kazatsky Burislav and Novakovka itself. Uh, let's move to the north over here. Here the advancement of Ukrainian army is great. So let's measure compared to the previous 27 kilometers in just three days. And today we reached Duchane. Maybe we already went further than Duchane because we have short delay for this military map just not to let our enemy the information about the current events and I'm waiting still for the recent update of this chart because the last one was this afternoon. So obviously there's going to be evening update uh, but today I'm quite early for that because I need to upload videos every day just to make you informed. What I see my friends that we have two of the major vectors over here and over here all right let's see the timeline for the recent couple of the days i will show you like it was two days ago actually three days ago it was like that no movement and in just three days we moved uh, such for such far distance and as usual you can see by the movement that we have the two major probably even three major vectors of our counter-attack and all of that isn't going to Novaka Hoka and Borislav itself so the main goal as usual for Ukrainian army is to encircle Russian forces over here that is why we need to advance from this side more fast compared to this side actually it's happening like that but unfortunately Russia were able to destroy the bridge in Duchane over here so we need to build the new bridge Panton bridge probably across this river and firstly we need to use our artillery to hit Russians over here then build the Panton bridge and cross the river and that may slow down our counteroffensive. however I'm still waiting for the recent update of this military map just to check out whether we were able to cross uh, this part across this road because further the only way for us is to go straight away to Novakahovka it's not just one bridge in the channel we also have the bridges in one in Milova and here one more in Novakari uh, village and it's quite hard to cross all of them but mainly here we have just the fields and so far the soil is not very soft so we can go across the fields on the tanks and other vehicles uh, to continue our counter-offensive operation so it's quite a big chance for Russian group to be encircled in that area and let's see what uh, regiments they have they have lots of forces uh, and separate special purpose brigade artillery regiment uh, motorized brigade rifle brigade they have lots of the forces in that area more much more compared to Liman I think around six up to seven thousand uh, soldiers but they are running away basically because they are afraid to be encircled from the information we got even from the Russian sources uh, that uh, they are running very fast with almost no fighting the final border for Russians could be this river over here in Gulitz river and that is very close to Kherson city itself and I think that we're gonna firstly push them to Novakahovka to cut uh, the rest of the supplies because here we cut uh, this part of the bridge so it's destroyed however they were able to build improvised bridge across this part and little by little they may send small cars with armor equipment uh, however it's still not enough for the group that they have in Kherson so they were struggling for long two months then we were able to cut uh, supplies for them uh, by the way today it was one more attack on Antonovsky bridge because uh, they might go with their own feet across that bridge because it was severely damaged but today it's completely destroyed so they cannot cross this bridge even with their feet uh, but still they have three of the ferries I don't know the exact positions of those uh, ships uh, that may 
transport some of the small cars but not tanks across the Dnieper River. So we do expect the big change in this part of the front line and I'm very excited about the current situation here. Let's go uh, to the fire detection. Here we have some sort of the fire. I wonder if it's artillery fire or not. Maybe something went wrong with satellite detection because recently I don't see lots of the fires across the front lines maybe uh, most of the fire was connected to the summer wildfires i see that we are not advancing from make alive part probably we're gonna push them closer to herson and then advance from two main directions who knows but i do expect that we're gonna reach the herson city by the end of this year probably much faster who knows my friends if we take here soon i do expect some of the changes in russia itself because they declare this part as the part of russia so if we take one of the major cities that they were able to take during this war it's uh, the biggest city that they took with almost no fighting so if we take it back there's gonna be some pressure on putin himself even now we can see that there is the big conflict between uh, russian generals and chechen leader kadyrov and also prigozhin who is the leader of the wagner private military campaign they all start to blame each other for the losses they have in ukraine and there is one more part uh, the intelligence service of russia which stays a little bit separate for now and also putin himself uh, who has connections with Kadyrov and military and Wagner group so we're gonna see how situation may go in case they would lose uh, Kherson city it's gonna be a big push uh, to the cliff for Russian government and now let's go to the north east part of Ukraine we have a huge advancement of Ukrainian army if you compare it to the Russian advancement uh, it took them like many months many weeks uh, to go ahead and take Pisky village or camp closer to Bakhmut city here you can see that the Ukrainian army takes loads of the ground recently and let's go for the timeline just want to show you uh, what happened here during the recent two days so it was two days ago and now it's like that so we are taking the ground across this river it's very important and we can use this part for the rest of the counter offensive operation that will go to Svatova so the big risk for Russia is to lose Svatova because it's the hot spot for the supplies and it's already very close to the front lines we can reach it with a simple artillery systems not even saying about the harmers and we are very close to Kremina and according to some of the information sources we already cut Russian supplies across this road however I wouldn't trust that information for now because I just need to confirm reconfirm that information before telling you but it's just a matter of time then we'll take Kremina we're gonna take it very very soon and Starobilsk oh sorry Svatova Starobilsk is far away uh next step will be Starobilsk so Svatova is very important as well as Troitske so speaking in general we need to perform our counteroffensive uh, operation right now uh, before the winter time then it's still possible to do on a vast parts of the front lines and we continue to push russians because we see the crack between the military uh, management uh, the militia management uh, chechens and the rest parts of the russian army so we need to increase that internal conflict in russia and before we go to the latest news and events let me tell you about my telegram channel because I cannot post everything on YouTube because of the YouTube policy. So that is why the Telegram channel is for that stuff. I post there everything that is connected to the current situation, including the action scenes from the front lines themselves. So I highly recommend you to subscribe. The link is in the video description below. Straight away to some of the breaking international news. So we got huge fire, not in Ukraine, but in South Korea, there is the air base and somehow there are some of the explosions and we don't know the source of that and i think yesterday uh, north korea tested its ballistic rocket uh, they fired it towards japan 
and now we can see the huge fire in the airbase of south korea i wonder if it was attack of north korea or not i hope it wasn't because it may spark a new conflict in asia this is the airbase itself it's very close to the sea and here is the spot of the fire and uh, the name of the airbase is gangdaeum airbase and here we have the place on the map uh, not far away from the north korea i would say uh, this is the list of the military equipment that ukraine is going to receive from the united states very very soon uh, so four high mobility artillery rocket systems HIMARS. we're gonna receive four more uh, hot vases and many many other stuff so thank you america for helping ukraine our guys continue to take more cities towns and villages on the south and not only putting Ukrainian flags, filming it. So that is how we receive the information for the Deep State Map Live that I got on most of my videos. Uh, so we have the confirmation taken by our soldiers. This is the Russian soldier, commander of the small group of uh, people. Uh, he said that from 23 people, uh, only seven left. Uh, he said that to journalists. By the way, the nickname of this guy is Cannibal so we don't know why seven people just left there russia already mobilized 200,000 people for their army but the quality of those people is very low they usually drink lots of vodka they are not obeying to the orders so they create they will create cows for russian side on the front lines believe me but still they gonna fight at some point causing losses for ukrainian army our tactics is to take sophisticated weapons rockets artillery systems that may destroy those mobilized soldiers modern day war is a little bit different it's not going to be the fight between large groups of soldiers on the ground it's going to be artillery fight aviation armored vehicles and for that russia doesn't have resources what they have is old soviet weaponry that is in lack of precision like of range and other stuff from the Ukrainian side, we have Western allies who provide with highly sophisticated weapons Ukrainian army. They are read the article of the Times and Guardian. They were saying about the nuclear Russian train that is ongoing to Ukrainian direction. They got that information from the Polish expert. At first, I was interested about it, but then I read more information about those nuclear trains. They are used by Russia constantly. They are in a constant movement. Uh, the rockets they carry can fire towards the uh, United States of America, so they don't need really to move that train closer to Ukrainian border to fire the nuclear rocket to Ukraine. And why do they move? Because it was the movement, the strategy from the Soviet Union. They thought that United States would not know the place of the launch of the nuclear weapons and it's normal stuff my friends so it's not a big threat nuclear threat from those trains right now as for today i trust western intelligence and especially united states and they say that for now it's not a sign that russia is preparing for the nuclear attack on ukraine or any kind of other country yeah it was uh, the alert in japan uh, i think this morning uh, North Korea launched the rocket. It all flown the territory of Japan from the information I got. And the rocket went to the oceans. And this is the warning. Air sirens in Japan. Today I was in the center part of the cave and I heard the sirens. It's usual stuff for our country. Elon Musk's saga continued till this morning. He probably woke up uh, and got hangover and he started to write messages. I still very much support Ukraine, but I'm convinced that massive escalation, blah, blah, blah. And we gave Starlinks to Ukraine and lost $80 million by doing so i would say yes so we got awesome help from elon musk i hope that they will not switch off their starlings for ukraine 
because it was the big attack from Ukrainian people on Elon Musk Twitter. We were very angry about his recent tweets, but it's just his opinion and he has the right on his opinion because we live in democratic society, but uh, his ideas are touching my country, so we also have the right to react on that. And my Sterling antenna is coming in two days, so I'll get my own review probably on that one. This box was found on free territories and basically Russians tortured local uh, people by pulling off the teeth that uh, got some gold. I don't know how to call Russian soldiers after what they've done to our people, to Ukraine itself. Uh, it's not gonna be the good attitude for Russia and Russians. Uh, we have pure hate uh, to that country and uh, the government, the soldiers, it's terrible. And we got the information from Ukrainian inspection uh, that uh, Russia could potentially mine first and second uh, reactors of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. NATO officially received the membership application from Ukrainian side and I hope in a couple of years, I'm sure, not I hope, I'm sure that we're gonna be part of NATO. As you probably know, I'm quite skeptical about the European Union, whether Ukraine should join it or not, but I'm sure about the NATO alliance. We need it. But still, I do support a European Union integration if the majority of Ukrainians uh, do support it. Russians ally Iran refused to recognize the recent referendums done by Russia in Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk and Lugansk. Interesting. So the only country that recognized that is the North Korea. But still they provided Russia with kamikaze drones and today we successfully destroyed some of them near to Odessa. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation here in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video because it helps to propel my videos around YouTube. Also, if you want to support this channel financially, there are some of the links in the video description below. You may support me on Patreon, PayPal or Donatello, whichever is more convenient for you. I wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.